Welcome to the Outriders demo. Amber here, and Outriders has one of the best in-game tutorials that I've seen in a while, and I'm going to read through the entire thing for you, and let me know in the comments below what's missing, what questions you still have. I'll be making my own guides with tips and tricks as I figure them out. I'm not always as fast as other YouTubers in pumping out guides for new games, but I do have a knack for figuring out things that other players might miss. So subscribe now so you can get more guides and gameplay for Outriders. First up is class and skills. Character level. To level up, you must earn experience points, XP, awarded for killing enemies and completing quests. The bigger the difference between the enemy's level and your own, the greater the experience points gained. Class tree. You earn class points for leveling up. There are 20 class points in total with the final point gained when reaching level 30. Class points are used to unlock class nodes in the class tab of the hero menu. The class three has three main branches, each focusing on an aspect of survival, weapon damage, or anomaly power, each corresponding to a different play style. You can always reset the tree, which refunds all spent points. Skills. Upon leveling up, you may unlock a new skill. These are your special abilities that can have various effects. Skills can deal damage based on your character's anomaly power. Skills can inflict status effects on enemies. Some skills provide buffs for you and your party, increasing your mobility or interrupting enemy movements and attacks. Your basic skill is an anomaly push and every class has its own version. To use the other eight skills, you first need to equip them. Skills use a number of targeting methods that sometimes require choosing a particular enemy within the skills range. Skills that are thrown or used on a selected enemy can be cast using aiming mode. When engaging in aiming mode, you can always cancel the ability. All skills can be quick cast by simply tapping the corresponding skill button. Health regeneration. When your health drops below the threshold marked on your health bar, your health is restored over time as long as you do not receive additional damage. Some class tree nodes can be used to raise this threshold. Class health, heal and leech. Each class has an innate healing mechanic. The devastator heals with every close range kill. The trickster heals and grants shield with every close range kill. The pyromancer heals when killing enemies marked with skills, and Technomancer gets significantly increased weapon leech and skill leech. Additionally, healing can be achieved through certain skills and item mods. Shield. Some skills, class tree nodes, and item mods provide ways to generate shield, which serves as a buffer to your existing health Enemy attacks deplete and destroy your shield first, and only deplete health after the shield is destroyed. Shield depletes over time, even when you're not receiving damage. Status effects. When you are affected by the bleed status, you will receive damage over time while moving. When you are affected by the burn status, you can remove the status and avoid damage by rolling. The toxic effect can be removed by receiving healing. Players can be granted status immunity through certain mods. Dead but not out. When you die, you respawn outside of the area you were defeated in. In co-op, however, instead of dying instantly, your character will enter the dead but not out state and can be revived by a party member. Reviving another player heals a portion of your own health as well. And now we're heading to the crafting section of this guide. With scientist on your side, you get access to crafting. Talk to Zahidi at the camp to enter the crafting menu. Crafting lets you improve your gear. There are five methods of improving gear, which we'll go over now. Improve rarity. This option lets you increase the rarity of an item up to epic. The rarities are common, unusual, rare, epic, and legendary. 
raise attributes. You can use anomaly shards to raise the bonus attributes of an item. Raising an attribute has a price in the amount of corresponding shards. If you dismantle an item whose attributes have been raised, you get some of the shards refunded. Mod gear. You can swap one of an item's mods for another from your list of known mods. You get known mods by dismantling items. Mod effects don't stack, meaning that two items with the same mod will grant this bonus only once. Swap weapon variants. As your character levels up, you unlock new weapon variants for each weapon type. The cost of this action is determined by the level of the weapon. Leveling up items. Rare, epic, and legendary items can be leveled up. This costs leather or iron for rare items and titanium for epic and legendary items. Leveling up increases the item's primary parameter, firepower or armor, and rerolls attribute values. And next, we're going to the enemies guide. Status effects. Some weapons, abilities, and enemy attacks cause a status effect alongside or instead of dealing damage. There are eight status effects. Ash, bleed, burn, vulnerable, freeze, toxic, weakness, and slow. Each player in a session can cast one instance of each status per enemy. Inflicting the status again will refresh the duration of the status, but it won't stack. Ash stops an enemy, as well as freeze, which stops an enemy. Bleed, burn, and toxic do damage over time. Vulnerable increases the damage received by that enemy, and slow reduces the movement and attack speed of that enemy. There are attributes, mods, and class tree nodes that can make status effects more powerful. Enemies. There are different types of enemies that you will encounter. Each has its own range of attacks and behavior. Each enemy type has attributes of health, armor, and resistance that determine how much damage is required to kill them. Recognizing the type of enemy you are fighting is half the battle. Close and long-range damage. Close range damage, by default, deals enemies that are closer than 10 meters away from you, and long range damage, by default, applies to enemies that are further than 25 meters away from you. Elite and boss enemy types. Some enemies are stronger than regular enemies and are marked by a red skull on the mini maps. These enemies are elites. Sometimes you will encounter a boss enemy with more health. Enemy skills. Enemies use regular skills and have a standard skill set determined by their type or species. But altered enemies, however, each have a unique set of available skills. Effect resistance. Elite enemies have an ability to enter an effect resistance state. Once activated, the enemy becomes immune to all crowd control effects. Effect resistance is activated when the enemy is affected by several crowd control effects or interrupts in a short period. An icon appears next to the health bar when the elite enemy enters this state. Now to gameplay and activities. Main quest and timeline. As you progress through the main quest, story points will unlock in your timeline, allowing you to replay any previously unlocked story point. Side quests and collector quests. Side quests are optional missions you can complete to level up faster and gain better loot. Collector quests are optional missions with numerous activities scattered around the world. These activities can be replayed at any time, granting you different rewards. World tier. 
World Tier determines the game's difficulty. There are 15 World Tiers in total. A higher World Tier will reward you with better loot drops and more experience points when killing an enemy. You can unlock World Tiers by playing with the highest currently available tier selected. In co-op play, you can play on your own highest available World Tier as the party leader. If another player is the party leader, and has chosen a higher tier than what you've unlocked, you continue, you continue leveling up as you would with your own highest world tier selected. Accolades. Accolades are a collection of ambient tasks that you can complete as you fight enemies and explore the game. Many accolades have up to five tiers with increasingly difficult requirements. Co-op play. In the lobby's change activity screen or the game menu, you can set the party to be open, meaning anyone can join, closed, meaning only invited players can join, or friends only, meaning only friends can join. Up to three players can play together in a co-op session. Should the party leader leave the game, one of the remaining players in the party will become the new party leader. Co-op quests and progress. Both the main storyline and side activities can be played in co-op. If you join a party that has progressed further than you in the main storyline, you will be warned about encountering potential spoilers, but you will be free to join anyway if you want to. When you play ahead of your own progress, the checkpoints you complete will be unlocked in your timeline, and the ones you have not will remain locked. When you join a party, you will automatically start tracking the party leader's quest. Two more sections in this guide. Next is items and loot. When enemies are killed, they drop loot. These drops contain ammunition and resource pickups that are collected when stepping near them. Loot often contains items. To collect an item from the ground, move near it. A short description will appear, prompting you to pick it up, equip, or dismantle the item. Note that you can activate auto loot pickup and filter the lowest tier item that will be automatically picked up in the game's options. Items. You can find gear in enemy loot drops, chests, receive them as quest rewards, or buy them at vendors. Each piece of equipment has its own level and one of five rarity tiers, common, unusual, rare, epic, and legendary attributes. All weapons have the firepower attribute, and all armor pieces have the armor attribute. Items of unusual and higher rarity also come with bonus attributes that provide benefits when equipped, or if the item is a weapon, when equipped and selected. Bonus attributes are armor pierce, crit damage, weapon leech, skill leech, healing received, close range damage, long range damage, bonus firepower, Anomaly power, max health, cooldown reduction, and status power. And they go into detail about what each one of these does, but they're pretty self-explanatory. Mods. Rare, epic, and legendary items have mods in addition to bonus attributes. These are custom anomaly-based effects that can have a strong influence on your playstyle and often change how your skills work. You can find how a mod works and what triggers it in the item's descriptions. Mod effects don't stack. Weapon variants. Weapons have different configurations named variants. Variants define a weapon's gunplay style and affect its firing mode. For example, single fire, burst fire, automatic, and clip size, damage per second, recoil, and speed. Item management. Loot on the ground can be picked up or instantly equipped. All items you pick up or equip can be found in your inventory. If you run out of available space, however, items are transferred to the item stash and can be accessed at the chest at camp. Dismantle. The inventory screen allows you to dismantle unwanted items, which refunds you resources and anomaly shards. Resources. There are several types of resources in the game. Scrap is the currency used for buying items. Leather, iron, and titanium are crafting resources. 
Anomaly shards are used for raising bonus attributes through crafting. And drop pod resources are received for finishing expeditions and are spent for entering the inner ring, the final expedition, or buying items and resources. And then the last section is the player camp. Camp location. In each region, the camp serves as a hub where you can find your travel companions, world and local map travel, crafting vendors, item stash, and matchmaking. Travel. To travel locally within a region, find any of the explorer flags in a region and interact with them. You can instantly move to any other flag you have visited in that region. To travel between the regions, talk to the convoy driver at camp. Customization. Talking to the convoy driver also lets you enter customization options. Item stash. Stash lets you store and transfer items between your characters. Item stash is a chest that can be found at the camp. And finally, vendors. You can buy and sell equipment at vendors that you encounter through your journey. Buying items costs scrap. You receive scrap when selling your own items. And that completes the game guide for Outriders. This is Amber. Subscribe to my channel for more guides and gameplay for Outriders.